Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends. We're back with an all new show this week. We hope you enjoyed last week's show full of food. Mm. This week it's food for your soul and so much more. We've ent we're entering a new month. That means we're also moving into a new focus topic for the 2016 Faith Challenge. We'll talk more about brotherly kindness in just a moment. But first, today's show includes wheelchair tennis. What is that about? And how is it having an impact right here in Lima? We have that story. Also, the recent Jefferson Award winners join us in the studio to talk about a mission project that's having a positive impact, impact on village girls in Kenya. We start our marriage series today, including introducing you to David and Tracy Sellers of Vows to Keep Marriage Ministries, but first, our scripture. It's a well-known verse here on TV44, and as we move into the month of June, we want to revisit our key verse for the 2016 Faith Challenge, 2 Peter 1, 5 through 7, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness, love. And brotherly kindness is going to be our focus throughout the month of June, and certainly there, that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. It certainly does. I think of a friend of mine who, as we were going through the adoption process the second time, we didn't have our tax refund back yet, so we couldn't progress down that road. And he said, if you believe God's calling you to, to this process, well, then I, I'll, I got your back. You know, I'll give you that money, mm -hmm. and you can pay me back whenever it is, whatever you want to pay back, really. And three weeks later, Anna was born. So <laughs> it happened just like that. And if not for a brother showing us brotherly kindness and, and asking us to follow God's leading, uh, we wouldn't have our daughter. Wow. Well, speaking of brotherly kindness, something new is coming to this area. The sport itself isn't new, but the opportunity for those who play is now expanding. Last year, a movement began to bring wheelchair and adoptive, adaptive tennis programs to Lima as a fundraiser for the purchase of more than a dozen specialized wheelchairs. At the end of May, the local organization hosted an event that took the program to the next level. Andy has more. Teachers getting taught. That's what was happening a couple Saturdays ago at Westwood Tennis Center in Lima. Nancy Hoekstra, um, she's one of the national lead national trainers for adaptive tennis. So um, what they're doing is they're going through a training on what they would basically do if they had kids out there. It's, there, it's adults out there right now but they're doing a wonderful job. She's doing a great job of taking them through different drills, activities, games, all that to get them instructed and get the kids out there for the adaptive tennis program. I just think it's wonderful because um, people with physical disabilities sometimes don't think they, they can do it and they find out you can do it in your own way. And uh, I mean, the socialization is incredible and uh, it's just, and we've got the, the support system through the USTA and it's gonna be great working on uh, mobility, drills, functionalities, working with partners. So it's all things, not just for adaptive and wheelchair, that is great for just anyone to get into the game. But part of the training here is demonstrating how it can be specific to those with intellectual challenges, uh, physical challenges as well. For 16-year-old Kellyanne Stallcamp, the program has been a dream come true. Because I used to watch them just play and me on the sideline and so it's fun me being out on the court. I've grown up in a tennis family, I love tennis, and we've kept Kellyanne away from tennis because of her latex allergy. They had this fundraiser, and um, we talked to the wheelers, and they said they have had latex allergies too, have her try it. And so we um, started having her come out. They got her a chair through the fundraiser that we had, and she loves it. She's been working with Andrea and having lessons, so now we're encouraging her friends to come out too. It means everything to me that I can actually play um, just to get the word out um, that you can actually play tennis in a wheelchair. It's wonderful because her sister plays and I play and her grandparents have played and for her to be able to play with us it's going to be really fun this summer. It's unbelievable. It's the joy on their the faces when they're learning something new and as they progress through you know the channels then you see such happiness and such joy and the smile on their faces is just is just unbelievable and they, they just absolutely love it. Well, they recently were awarded the Jefferson Award for their incredible work overseas as well as here home in the States. And I'm very pleased to have Stephen Erling Sellers with us today on Faith and Friends. And they've also brought along Luke Amoki all the way from Kenya. What a great gift to have all three of you here. Thank you for joining us here at TV44. Thank you for Thank inviting you. us. Thank you. 
Well, let's go ahead and first get started. Steve and Erlene, let's let's talk about, I know as far as the Jefferson Award winner, winning went, there were a lot of facets that went into that, but let's talk about your mission work in Kenya. Explain to me the things that you're involved with. Well, could I go back to the, like, maybe three years ago, I was, I was in Haiti and I found out uh, that the young girls in Haiti does not have sanitary pads and Mission Possible has been supplying the girls in our schools with sanitary pads uh, for a number of years. And I just got to thinking about that and what about Kenya and other third world countries. So I went to Kenya and I talked to Luke and some of my friends there and they said that that was a big problem in their country just like other countries. And so God placed that on my heart to, to try and do something about that. And of course, all of you ladies at home who are thinking about this, this is not something we worry about. Of course, we have this monthly menstrual thing, but we are not in the same kind of situation. Erlene, tell me what it is like for these girls who don't have the sanitary pads, who are trying to live their normal life. Well, they do miss, some of them miss a week of school because of it. So they're that much farther behind than the boys in their education. But well, some of the girls that we talked to this year um, they can go buy them now, but they're so expensive that they can't really afford them, so they use them improperly. Mm. So um, this is, and they're so thrilled to get them that, um, you know, they all want them, and of course we can't take care of all of them, but uh, yes, and they're very knowledgeable about life, and they're very honest with you, and, and um, they really appreciate what we do for them. So as we uh, talk a little bit more about this, I want you to just stop and think about this. If you are a female, I want you to think about what is going on here. So imagine you have your monthly menstrual period and you can't go anywhere because you don't have supplies to uh, keep that from becoming a problem. So your life literally has to stop for about a week and there's nothing more you can do. You can't go to school, you can't go to work, you can't do any of that stuff. And that's where this, this mission work that Arlene and Steve are doing is such a help. Steve, explain a little bit about now what is being made, what's being done in this. Well, we're always looking for ladies or church groups that, you know, a lot of churches have sewing groups and, <clears throat> excuse me, and we're always looking for people to make the pads. And the pads are easy to make. They're just, we uh, buy a, it's a cotton and polyester batting that goes in inside and then a flannel that goes over the outside. And actually we found that flannel sheets worked really well. We go to the thrift store and we can buy flannel sheets fairly cheap and they make a lot of pads. So these are reusable pads mm -hmm. that, uh, that these women can have and reuse over and over again. Luke Moki is in charge of Teens <coughs> for Christ in Kenya. And so being in that environment, you obviously are around the girls who are experiencing this. Tell us firsthand how this kind of thing can help change things for these women. Yeah, like Elena said, <coughs> these girls miss a week of school just because they are experiencing their menses. Then uh, number two, some of these girls use very bad things like skins to, <laughs> to try and, uh, and stop the blood from flowing. So apart from that, they are not only using bad things that some of them cannot access. So Steve and Elaine coming to do what they are doing is, is a breakthrough to mm. the girls. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And before we're done, Luke, I want to get an update with, from you on Teens for Christ, but let's just talk a little bit more about this project before we move on. Um, so you are heading back to Kenya in November, mm -hmm. a few months down the road, but it's going to come here very quickly. Um, you know, we're talking about a medical issue, and it could be easy for us to just put God aside and say, well, you're doing a good thing, because there's a lot of people who aren't Christians who do good things, but you recognize what you're doing is a God thing. How do you see God working in what you're doing through all of this? Well, for me, doors are opening. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even in this community, <coughs> people are opening their arms. They're offering to do what they can. And um, of course, we have a lot of prayer. And that, 
that's important because we can't do it without prayer. And uh, we travel a lot of miles, you know, and there's a lot of expense to it, but uh, things always fall in place. And, you know, Luke is so good for us there, and he always lays everything out, about everything is always planned. And, and what they're doing now, you know, that they're not always relying on handouts, and that they're working themselves to make the pads. And I think it, that's encouraging. That's great. That's great. What can people here at home in Lima and Northwest Ohio and Indiana, the people who can view this, what can we be doing to help you? Well, they could help by making pads. And of course, Prayer. we have to buy the material. So it costs money. We get good support from our church, but uh, we, you know, we just need help with uh, making the pads and finances and we, was able to get loop set up over in Kenya last year. They're actually making pads now and doing a good job of that. Mm -hmm. And so. And you mentioned prayer. Prayer. Yeah. Prayer we, is a key. We can't do it without prayer. Yeah. You know. So Luke, I know you are you are kind of just an observer. You're not the one making the pads. Mm -hmm. You see the women's. You see this happening. Yes. Um, so it's really a good thing. Yes. So the, I wanted to explain to you the idea. That I told Steve that maybe you will not come every year with the pads and carrying them from states is very difficult. So I brought up the idea that we can have the machine, the showing machine in Kenya, and then we can have somebody making it. But making them and then distributing them for free would not last long. So you would rather make something else. So we are making uniforms and some clothes for women. We sell them, make a little money, pay the woman and the house rent and also make pads to distribute mm. for free. So that's the model that we think can work and will last long. So you're really helping in many ways. Yeah. You're helping the women through yeah. their monthly period time, yeah. but you're also providing work, you're providing a lot of other yeah. opportunities yeah. through yeah. the whole thing. It's really growing. Yes, <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> over there, you have to wear uniforms to school. You know? yeah. So mm -hmm. that's why you making the uniforms is a necessity. So. Excellent, yeah. great. Well, we are just about out of time, but Luke, I'd like to hear, tell me an update how things are going with Teens for Christ in Kenya. You were recently, you were here, you got to join the Converge Conference here, yes. you got to be here for things, but God is doing amazing things yes. over where you are. Yes. So in Teens for Christ, we are a growing ministry in Kenya, and the ministry uh, is expanding because we have opportunity to expand. Sometimes we cry in our hearts looking at the opportunity that is wasted because we lack resources. Uh, like right now we are reaching 215,000 teenagers per week in about 630 schools. Uh, last month we had uh, 6,000 salvations or people that came to Christ. But when we look at what we can be able to do and what we are doing, we <laughs> we we kind of say in our hearts then we need to do more, but then we can't do because there is no resources or we don't have enough that can make us do more or can enable us to do more. So that is what is happening with Teens for Christ, a growing ministry. We need your prayers and support to, so that we can do much more uh, than we are doing now. Wow, wow. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Luke. Thank you for what you're doing. You want to add something, Steve? Oh, I, you know, I'm just, uh, I never, never thought that I would be involved in something like this because it's not a very manly issue. And it, when I first started out, when God first placed this on my heart, that I thought it was really a tough situation for me to deal with. And, but now it's... Everything's falling in place. Yeah, everything <laughs> is falling in place, and I've been convinced that this is something that God wants us to do. Good. Good. When God is in it, he does make a way and make a path. And we'll yeah. be praying for those resources for you, Luke, because as you can see, the, the harvest is, is ripe. The yeah. workers yeah. may be few, but <laughs> God is a big God and yeah. his yeah. abilities never, never end. Yeah. Yeah. 
We thank him thus far. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the time you see this interview, Luke will be back in Africa. It'll still be a few months before the sellers go to Africa, but right now is a moment when you can be involved. The first step, of course, is praying. If God is leaning you on your heart to be involved financially or in other ways, we encourage you to contact Teens for Christ or the sellers, or if you don't know how to do either one, just call us at TV44 and we will make those connections for you so that you can have an opportunity to be involved as well in all of these things that are taking place. Place. Isn't it incredible to hear how God is working all around the world? And it starts right here in Lima. It starts wherever we are, wherever you are, God has a plan. And like Steve said, he thought he was doing something that was not a manly thing, but God put it on his heart. He said yes to God. He stepped out. And now look at the amazing things that are happening. The time is now to bring your donations to TV44. We're gearing up for this year's auction, and we need your items now to make it a success. Furniture, collectibles, antiques, tools, vehicles, mowers, anything of value. Drop-offs accepted Monday through Thursday, 10 till 3. Call for Friday hours, 419-339-4444. Donate your items now to the TV44 auction. When I was five years old, I started to notice that our family was drastically changing. My parents were having a hard time in their marriage and it was breaking the whole family apart. My parents were getting divorced and my brothers and I felt at fault. My mom remarried and my stepdad was a pastor, but I started to lose my faith in God and question what I was really doing in my life. I started to become a bully and a jerk to everyone who was just trying to do the cool thing. Then I started going back to my uncle's church on Sundays and it changed my whole life. It was like God was telling my uncle exactly what to say and it was directed right towards me. I felt at peace with my life and was excited to see what was next. This change was still pretty hard for me. Most of all, I was scared to leave the only friends I had. Eventually though, I stopped hanging out with that group and looked for new friends. This was hard because I felt like everyone was turning on me and I had no one in my life. I decided to try Walpox FCA. I was very nervous but the first time I went, but I knew that I was never not going to go again. FCA was very vital to the foundation of my faith because it allowed me to look at problems in areas of my life that I and other students struggled with. As my faith grew my last two years of high school, a dream of mine became a reality and I was being recruited to play college football. I asked God just to where he showed me where he wanted me to go and the best place for him, me to serve him. The very night I surrendered that decision to God. I got, a, I got a call from a coach, but it wasn't for football. It was to run track at Indiana Wesleyan. On my visit, I finally felt at peace with where God wanted me to serve him. I have a question for you if you are married. Raise your hand if your marriage is perfect. Okay, I'm gonna put my hand down because I don't qualify and I bet none of you do as well. We are not perfect. We're not perfect beings. We live in a sinful world. And we bring that sinfulness into our marriage. We bring baggage into our marriage. We bring struggles into it. And even the couple that has the best intentions to walk forward with Jesus the way that he plans, uh, it's always gonna have some bumps in the road. But I wanna introduce you to Vows to Keep, a nearby ministry whose heart is to get us back on that path toward Jesus so that our marriages can be the way that God has planned. David and Tracy Sellers, let's talk about this ministry. What is Vows to Keep? Vows to Keep is a marriage ministry that we felt, we felt called to start um, just to help people to apply the Bible to the things that they're going through in their marriage because the Bible is not silent. Uh, it, it addresses everything we go through in our marriage and gives us clear direction. And so our goal is just to work with couples uh, to share with them how a God who loves us is providing us with everything we need to really excel and to enjoy a marriage and to ultimately have a marriage that becomes a testimony for him. Tell me some of the things that Vows to Keep does. Sure. One thing we do is marriage conferences. We travel all around the region. It could be at an event center. It could be at a church. Friday night, all day Saturday, giving couples those big biblical building blocks to take home and build a strong, healthy, godly marriage. We also do uh, date nights, which is, have been a lot of fun. The date nights are usually just a Friday night or sometimes a Saturday night with a goal to just enrich in the relationship, to have quality time together. We also always present a message and uh, usually couple it with some dessert as well. <laughs> We've done things like canoe date nights. Uh, you get out on the, on the river with your spouse and just have some one-on-one -on -one time to talk. Uh, we would you know, start a bonfire and, and just have a great time together, fellowship. Uh, we've done ballroom dancing and things like that. It totally stretches me outside of my comfort <laughs> zone. But no previous dancing required. Um, these are things that are just intended to give us opportunities to exercise our love for each other. 
before you talk about some of the other things that Vows to Keep does, marriage conferences, date nights, face it, we're busy. We're all busy. We've got things going on. Why, why should we as married couples, why should my husband and I stop our busy life to attend a marriage conference or a date night? What's the, what's the benefit from it? That's a great question. We oftentimes find that couples don't want to do that until they're actually at that point of like criticalness. You know, they realize we have just gone off the tracks here. And that is unfortunate. I, I kind of liken this to maintenance in your car. Mm -hmm. If we waited to change the oil until, you know, we were at the 200,000 mile mark, we wouldn't get there. And so we often encourage couples that are looking for the long haul type of relationship that spending some time at one of our conferences will help you to get there. Uh, it's a great way to do some maintenance. It's a great way to think about the things we're dealing with in our marriage today and how we're going to set up for a legacy that will last th that the future generations beyond me, you know, my kids as kids will be able to appreciate. So it's definitely worth going to the trouble of finding babysitters, yes. all, even spending a little money, all of those things, because it's definitely a lot cheaper than oh, absolutely. a divorce, of course. It's <laughs> an investment, and it can be a fun investment. It can be the investment that you've been waiting for. Lord, I need something to happen. All of a sudden, you find yourself at a conference with some time to talk and digest some of those things you're learning, and now all of a sudden, the dialogue is open where it wasn't before. You also have daily, ongoing opportunities through the radio and other things. That's right. We have uh, been on the radio with Vows to Keep Radio for a number of years now, and uh, that is essentially an opportunity that we try to take to just share how God's Word applies with something that we've bounced into in our own marriage or something that's come up uh, in a frequent basis with counseling with couples. It's just something that we try to do to share some truth and to make it very applicable to what you might be wrestling with in your own marriage. What are the radio stations, Tracy, that your Vows to Keep Radio can be heard on? So right now you can listen in Lima, WTTP, and he plays our Marriage Minutes right now. Marriage Minutes are just quick one-minute devotions, and soon our Vows to Keep Radio will be on there as well. Is that 101.1? 101.1. One, one. One, one mm -hmm. And then if you're in the Belfound, Marysville, Kenton area, you can listen to Shine FM. That's 88.5 if you're a little bit northward, or 88.9. And people can go to the Shine FM website or the Vows to Keep website, mm -hmm. and they can listen to those as well, right? Yes. So you've got the conferences. We're in great settings. We've got date nights, fun events to get things going. The radio ministry is, of course, important, but sometimes one-on-one -on -one counseling mm -hmm. is just is a key. It is a key, and it can be a key right away when a couple is thinking about getting married. That's when we love to see their excitement to do things God's way, to set things up right from the beginning, that solid foundation. So we do premarital counseling. We also do other kinds of counseling. And yeah, we work with couples that are maybe, you know, they've been married for three, four, five years, and they've got kids, and they're not necessarily in a divorce type situation, but they realize that there's some issues that they're constantly bouncing off of. Those are couples that we would work with, uh, all the way up to couples that are literally at a point in which they're ready to sign the divorce papers. I got two emails this past week from two couples that were in that position. Certainly our goal is to try to work with them before that point, but you know, we always want to see that God can transform those hurting situations and he will make them a testimony. We've seen it happen many times. Our counselors um, are all in pursuit of certification or are already certified and uh, we've, we've seen a great fruit from just applying the Bible uh, to these couples and, and to the situations that they're going through. And you're a not-for-profit, so when it comes to costs for this counseling, it's not a typical hourly wage. If, if finances are the issue, mm -hmm. that is not a deterrent when it comes to getting this kind of counseling. Exactly. That's correct. Yeah, we, we basically take an approach where we would ask you to pay it forward for the next couple, in fact, that, that you wouldn't necessarily think of your own marriage, but you'd think of the next one um, and, and make a donation if you can, but it is, it is otherwise free. If that's a factor for you, we don't want it to be. And speaking of donations, if we've got viewers at home who are, who they've made it through, they, their marriages are strong, um, they've, they've survived that 40, 50 year anniversary, and they want to invest in the next generation, can they donate to your ministry? Absolutely, yeah. If you go to VowsToKeep.com, there's a, a link there that you can donate, and you can click and donate to us on. All right, VowsToKeep.com, Vows to Keep Marriage Ministries, 
I don't know what you think, but as we look at our country, we look at our, our society, we look at all of the ways we're being pulled, I personally think that this is one of the most important ministries that's out there, um, a lifeline, fighting the devil. The devil wants our families and our marriages to end, but God has such a greater plan and vows to keep ministries is a key in order to do that. Here's some information on the screen on how you, on the screen on how you can contact David and Tracy Sellers. Their email address is right there, info at vows to keep .com, their website, or you can jump onto Facebook, like their Facebook page. You can keep up to date on not only the events that they have coming up, but also their inspirational posts that they have just to keep you going. Remember, you can also listen to their radio program at WTTP 101.1 or Shine FM. And make sure you're watching TV for your for faith and friends all throughout the month of June and continuing in the summer or online on our website as we bring you incredible biblical marriage tips that could just be an essential key to your strong marital future. If you have questions about marriage issues, if you need to be connected with David and Tracy Sellers at Vows to Keep and you have trouble getting through their website, call us here at TV44. God puts you in your marriage for a purpose, for a reason. He desires to keep you going. And even in those bumps in the road, you feel like you're off track. God is providing resources just like this one to help get you back on the path that he has for you and your spouse. Donate your car, boat, motorcycle, or mower to the TV44 auction. You'll benefit from a tax deduction, but more importantly, you'll be part of the ministry of TV44. Call today to find out more. Something to think about if you are planning to trade in your vehicle, would it be beneficial for you to instead consider donating that trade in vehicle to TV44 for our annual auction? You receive a tax deduction, but beyond that, your donation is creating a long term blessing both to TV44 and to the high bidder of the vehicle. For more information on that or any auction donation, just call us at 419-339-4444. Well, next week on Faith and Friends, our Vows to Keep Marriage series focuses on the topic of boundaries. Plus, we're anticipating a visit from Congressman Jim Jordan. But now we close by returning to that familiar scripture here at TV44 all year long, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. The focus in the month of June on the topic of brotherly kindness. And it says, but also for that very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness love. Start thinking about ways that you can show and exhibit brotherly kindness and thank those around you that are doing the same to you. Have a great week.